Hello all and welcome to episode 16 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged, uh, short form ETI Unplugged. ETIunplugged.in is our website. Uh, please do visit there and we post all our content there as well as uh, on Facebook as, as well as LinkedIn. Uh, we are, we have put back our uh, link which was broken to Apple Podcasts. Now it is available on Apple Podcasts and uh, Spotify and and uh, Podomatic. So uh, you have the RSS, uh, you, if you have your own pod catcher of some kind, you can just use the RSS feed and get our podcast, latest version of our audio podcast from there. And if you want to watch video, you are welcome to go to YouTube. And uh, that is uh, where most of you are seeing this. Although we are not great looking people, but uh, we try to produce great audio content for you and you should be able to listen to uh, the content while doing other work, right? So uh, we have Kumar, our uh, favorite person from uh, Tiny Magic. He's the chief mentor and the chief technology officer for, for Tiny Magic. Uh, and the topic which we are taking up today is open source and then ent enterprise, right? And uh, we also have Nito joining us and let us see if we can get his video in. Uh, Nito, uh, yeah, all right. So, all right. Hey, Nito. Hey. Hi. Uh, Nito, why don't, why don't you introduce yourself again for, for our audience who have not seen you for six, seven months now? <laughs> yeah. <Hey>, uh... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Nito Kumar, uh, working for Batusa. I'm an associate director of technology, call it a senior architect at this point. Um, been working in the industry for uh, more than 15 years now. Thanks, Nito. And uh, I, I was just introducing the, uh, the topic which we are, uh, we are discussing today, which is open source in the enterprise. And uh, since you joined last, I would let you go first. Uh, to to tell us what is your opinion about open source in the enterprise? You've been you've been there long enough to actually have seen the both the proprietary world and the open source world and this this whole transformation uh, which is happening now. What what is your opinion about this open source? Is it is it really useful? Not useful? Your take on it? Yeah. So basically, like you know, uh, nowadays it's a different. Uh, it has the, the game has changed um, now. Like you know, there is no survival uh, in terms of actually like you know even publicity. Uh, so mm -hmm. for for example, like you know the best uh, uh, the tools that we are using for development, like you know application development and uh, you know even web development like React and you know Angular. These are all coming from, you know, proprietary, uh, supposed to have been a proprietary companies, but now it is uh, opened up. And uh, it's a good thing, right? So, but like, you know, it's not that always, like, you know, every uh, corporation or enterprise is actually willing to, like, you know, put out their own, but they are happy to, like, you know, obviously use what is uh, open source. Uh, it had been the case, but I can see, like, you know, now, like, you know, every company, is actually wanted to if they want to make a name in the um, like you know in the in the industry, they need to actually have to be on the open source space, and that uh, change is happening at least in full or, or by part by part. Thanks, Tito. So, so uh, Kumaran, what is what has been your experience with uh, with with open source? What is the real value of open source? Um. Okay, so I think. When I was thinking open source, right, uh, there are a couple of points. What does open source mean? And I have got this clear in my mind uh, for myself is that uh, we tend to associate open source with free. Open source is equal to free. OK, mm -hmm. so uh, that would be just one perspective, right? And it's not that open source is always free. It's not just free. OK, um, it's just that you have access to the code which is there. Now, in other words, it also means a lot of responsibility. So the to put it specifically, when I uh, I started off obviously with proprietary stuff, right? There's no open source there. And uh, when it's open source and if I truly use a open source, 
that means the entire responsibility of that code functioning is on my head mm-hmm. i don't have anybody else to share the load with so in other words open source is not just free it is also means a high degree a very high degree of responsibility so if i take a proprietary software then that responsibility can be handed over to the person from whom i am buying it now responsibility for what responsibility for deploying it operating it or getting it to usage all three becomes my responsibility let's take a very simple example we'll take uh, microsoft office and open office at a very simple yeah. stage mm-hmm. when it was microsoft office there were tons of help documents usage documents and videos which microsoft had published because only if they do that will it be popular and it will be bought more but when open office came there was hardly any material on video or usage or how it needs to be done and things like that Okay. There is nobody But, investing in doing that. Yeah. There was nobody investing in doing that. So that became the responsibility of the individual to do it. Now, when I started my own uh, company in my previous stint, there was a portal product that I had done. I had done it using uh, PHP and MySQL. That was my first foray into open source. Open source. Application. Yes. Okay. and why did i do that because i was going for small end users who are going to use that application now for them it was just a website so it really didn't matter what i was using in the back end was it a .net or a php mysql it doesn't matter to them but the problems came when i kind of deployed it into production so there was something called a i think it was called fox server i think at that point in time it was one package which will get mysql and php together so there was some other open source who had made it as a single installable so i download fox and i install it it will install both php and mysql and set up the server right. okay right but when i deployed it in the customers they had a hard time maintaining it okay if it was just a sql server or asp or asp.net there were material that they could go to there was a certification people could be sent to but then so basically but is it true the open source no red hat linux is a great example mm-hmm. linux is open source red hat is a paid version of that support and that other piece so when you say open source am i looking for just the cost part of the actual product but the operations and support i would like to take from something else okay so let's say i just want to use something completely free mm-hmm. then you go to mysql site or a ubuntu site download it and use it right. if i say i don't want to pay for the product but for the value add of help documentation and things like that then you go for some intermediate thing called red hat linux mm-hmm. is a good example of that but let's say you know what i don't know what is free what is costed which is good which is not bad i just want to focus on my business okay building the it capability is not in my core area of operations then proprietary software whether it is windows or google or whatever can be done mm-hmm. i think if this clarity is there i think that's the first step enterprises needs to it it cannot be just open source is all free and this is all paid no yeah. and in terms of lock in is another thing which i have heard just because i go for open source doesn't mean i don't have a lock in problem yes i have i have used angular js in my applications mm-hmm. current applications which i am using now i cannot upgrade it because there's no new version of that right mm-hmm. and i want to go to a new thing like vue.js i can't switch i am locked on even though it's open source i'm still locked in it's only that some company didn't lock me i put the lock on myself so the lock getting locked in will happen regardless of whether it's open source or proprietary right. okay so these are the things which i have learned and understood over the period and, of and, and if you and, and if you if you see if you see from uh, what the, the the big companies like microsoft uh, are now doing is they're turning their older proprietary software into open source and putting them on github 
right? You can now get the open source, uh, you can get the source code for DOS, right? I think you can get open source for so many other products. Now, in fact, most of the newer uh, version of things which, which Microsoft is making, they are, uh, like for example, .NET Core is open source, right? Uh, uh, Visual Studio Code, right? Which is a whole IDE, right? Which is based on the Electron is open source. Right. So, 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 why do you think that trend is happening? How is it really helping uh, a, a big company like Microsoft to turn turn their products into open source? What is what is the value for them actually? Um, okay. So, I think. So, let me just talk for myself itself. Right. It's not directly from technology, but if you look at what we do in Tiny Magic, it's about helping people improve their performance. Right. It's for a phenomena based learning. Now, whatever we are working on, we have shared it publicly under creative license, CCL. Okay, that's a variation of that. Okay, so basically it's right. something like, you know, you're free to use as long as you give credit. Credit. To me. Right. Okay. Creative Commons. Now, yeah, yeah. it is like open source. So I have open source meaning. Why would I do that? I have done that because if more and more people see what is actually happening under the hood, Right. Mm -hmm. I think Nito, you should go to tiny URL slash hypoha. Okay. So that's the thing where we have the updated version significantly different from what you guys had seen. Okay. So you can kind of have a look at it to update yourself. Now, this is one example, like somebody who has an older version of something, right? Now they can just by looking at the new one, they can just upgrade it. Obviously they have to take their own effort. Okay. Now, if Nito wants some coaching, then he pays for it. But if he can learn by himself, then he's free to use it. So in a sense, I am increasing my, as a creator, I'm increasing the, I'm reducing the bar to adoption. I'm removing the money from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if more people are adopting my solution, then I am successful. Now I have two choices. Either I won't give that information and Nitho doesn't have money. So he doesn't get it. I also don't get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's a chance that somebody else will convert him. Now I let it open source. He has no money, but he's still loyal to me. Okay. okay. If he wants specific thing, then he takes help and pays for that. Okay. And if he's going to take that extra effort of taking it and applying it, then good enough. The most important thing is when he tries it, if he has a problem, he would still come to me. And that helps me fix problems in my system. Right. So right. that makes so, my so, system. So is, is, it, is, it, is it about trust? Is it about gaining trust from, from, your, uh, from the users of your, your application? Nito, Nito what, what is your view on... All these big companies making this their own proprietary software now open source. What what is the value in if from your perspective? What you see? Why do you see that? Why they? Yeah. Uh, you're on mute, uh, uh, Nito. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So traditionally, it's about like you know, um, you know, like you know, when you have a new model of a car. It's a traditional, mm -hmm. like, you know, you actually, like, you know, give it out to the leasing, uh, the, the rental companies. Mm -hmm. Right? So, is and, like, you know, people are actually getting brand new cars to drive uh, just when you're paying a small amount of uh, for a day or two. But right. what they are realizing is, like, you know, they, are, they have the reach. So, mm -hmm. now, like, the people have to just, like, you know, come in into a showroom to, like, you know, get a car. Now, like, you know, they get a free ride. Not a free ride, like mm -hmm. you know, the, the experience they get it, like you know, uh, out of the sh you know, they think it's one channel to like you know, actually reach people, right? Like Kumaran rightly mm -hmm. said, you know, there are people who is going to be like you know, unknown part of the world who is going to be experiencing this and using it, and even the co enterprise may not actually have that reach to that uh, corner in that uh, in in the in the conventional context. They are not going to be like you know, uh, what do you call uh, uh, marketing uh, their product. Mm -hmm. Or like you know, creating a user base in the first place, like you know, um, so like you know, if, if something is like you know, open source, even like you know, all these like you know, social media items, right? Who knew like you know, like you know, all, all over the world, like you know, people are using it. 
you don't have to go and teach them that this is something that you should use mm -hmm. they in increasingly uh, picking it up right so that is the new norm uh, as i would think but you know traditionally it also actually like you know helps you improve uh, your own systems and your own uh, this thing that is that uh, you know the subscription model for a production support kind of model that uh, Kuvarand was talking about. Linux is where, uh, you know, how like the Red Hat like evolved, where like, you know, they actually made sure like, you know, the the, the free version is as good as the, you know, the, what do you call uh, the open source version. Uh, sorry, right. the, the proprietary or the paid support. Version. Paid, paid version. Right. Maybe there right. might be a small uh, time lag uh, mm -hmm. between like, you know, when the, uh, you know, the open source version get that rigor. Uh, but like you know, th that's that's how I see it. Okay. So so let, let me come to a point about security, right? So is there this? There's a perception. I, I do not. I want to get your opinion. There's a perception that that open source is inherently somehow more secure than the proprietary source. Uh, st you starting with you, uh, uh, Kumaran. Do you think that perception is? Is real uh, is based on reality, or it, it, it's just some somebody imagining stuff? What is your opinion? Uh, I think open source would be more secure if it is if there is a sync between what is being produced and what is being implemented, for the very simple reason that there are lesser nine number of blind spots. More people are looking into it. That means more people can see vulnerabilities in that. The biggest challenge with that is that the ones who are actually taking it for that as the motivation should make mm -hmm. sure that if a vulnerability is exposed, they have to fix it first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because you see, because I, I come to this because they, there is there there was this uh, open SSL leak, right? Remember that open SSL bug was there, and and that caused significant uh, uh, issues with the uh, with people uh, not means their their websites basically getting exposed, right? Because open SSL was an issue. So and that code has been around for for long time. So what do you think that? Uh, open to uh, visibility had did not increase the uh, people looking into it as you suggested. Okay, so it it kind of relates to the first point about responsibility, right? When you use open mm -hmm. source, it becomes your responsibility. Okay, so just because something is open doesn't mean a lot of people are also looking at it. Okay, right. and right. there are always it's blind like spots. <laughs> we can't help it. Right. It's human right, nature. Right. There will be right. blind spots. OK, you simply can't avoid it. It is just right. that if there are 50 blind spots inside a company, 10 will be spotted in an open source world. 20 will be spotted, but 30 will still be hidden. Mm -hmm. OK, now the question then comes. So can I discover all things just because it's open source? I think it's humanly impossible. Now, mm -hmm. when a blind spot is exposed by somebody, right, somebody for the kick of it, Right, will actually go publicly and then say, Oh, this is a black hole there because that is his brownie point. Right, right. Okay. Now, what happens if it is proprietary and if that was logged as a bug or something internally, there is a buffer time that somebody gets to fix it. Right. When it's open source, you don't have that buffer. Right, right. Yeah, in fact, in fact, please. If you, if you look at uh, the people trying to expose these holes, they are more focused on the proprietary software, right? So, so this, this, is, this is a sort of a counterpoint to uh, open things, right? Well, more people trying to hack uh, a Mac OS, Mac OS sort of based on uh, uh, BSD, but Windows, right? Or uh, iOS, right? These are, these, are, these are all proprietary operating systems, right? There, there are more people trying to break into these operating systems than, say, uh, some version of uh, Linux, which is available on a mobile phone, right? Not that popular. So, uh, so even though the code is open source, but not many people are interested in fixing it or even hacking it, right? So, so in in a way, proprietary uh, software getting hacked uh, more often 
is sort of an incentive for them to uh, uh, they, they are getting fixed because they are getting hacked so what what is your opinion ito <laughs> well you can see it that way as well um, because nowadays like you know nothing is as so much proprietary as it is like you know you can decouple things and see it for what it is right Uh, for the most time like you know for convenience now all these are like you know kind of like you know uh, the byte code kind of uh, uh, implementations now like you know we don't like you know scramble code and all those kind of things even the final deliveries you can also like you know just decompile and see what for what it is so uh, it's almost like you know yeah that level of like you know what do you call um, yeah you don't get the code but you can see like you know, if you want to like you know see what what's going underneath under the hood because it has come to that level of abstraction so in terms of <clears throat> uh, so even like you know when it comes to the security companies nowadays uh, the way that they actually like you know scan for vulnerabilities is actually not by the code yeah there is a level of uh, scanning for the code for security but like you know nowadays they ask you to submit the binaries and they actually uh, scan your binary so it is to that level like you know it, it has come to it right because of the programming models that we have these days mm-hmm. but in in terms of like you know yeah that like you know we wanted to like you know kind of steer clear from the hackers uh, just because like you know we are like you no know, closed and people are like you know we, and maybe it's not just because it's closed there might be some other incentives like you know for them to like you know hack like you know a, a company who, you know who is closed and maybe like you know it's worth uh, you know maybe like you know some hidden incentives uh, maybe the company will actually um, uh, pay more to like you know stay away from it so mm-hmm. maybe the hackers are intent incentivized because if if somebody hacks a linux they have to keep go and like you know hack very specific you know uh, customers or like you know the usage of it but maybe mm-hmm. like you know hacking microsoft might be like you know they might actually feel like you know they they have a chance to like you know get some intensive from microsoft itself so right. Right. most of the big companies uh, i mean even like you know they they kind of like now like you know let the hackers to like you know come in and like you know or like an ethical hackers to come in and actually mm-hmm. uh, hack it for themselves that's uh, again like an open source really it's an open mm-hmm. i don't know infrastructure open t- testing kind of things so let them do it like if they can figure it out like you know we pay for it and like you know um, keep it uh, zero day uh, we, we delay the zero day vulnerability right but they give a chance right. to like you know fix it uh yeah like you know you can see it that way in a way like you know there is there is a big dynamics behind it in terms of uh, the hackers and uh, what do you call the corporates and things like that like you know it's not very trivial sometimes it's 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 like you know always you know kept hush hush uh, so yeah there is a definitely a possibility what's your opinion kumar and uh, are, are uh, hackers making uh, uh, under the table deals with the, with the corporates uh, and making money on of their exploits what is really happening there what is your uh, i i think it, most of the hacker deals are under the table mm-hmm. most of them right mm-hmm. and, and, and that's the way that world operates okay because see it's it's like simple blackmail right you don't mm-hmm. send uh, a notice to the newspaper and then you ask the guy for money <laughs> yes. that's not how blackmail fundamentals <laughs> of blackmail work uh, what <laughs> my, my question was do you think this is happening quite often you, that's what's my question is this oh. is we you know it is happening but you, do you think this is i don't okay I, I actually yeah. no it's it's hard to tell that uh, but uh-huh. unless uh, unless you have personal experience they would they would be very hard to tell yeah and, and and it's very hard to tell but in my personal experience at least with large companies in india okay if i have to take the large five it companies i personally know at least three of them have gone through massive payments in millions of dollars to hackers so there you have it <laughs> so the, the hackers Uh, are are having these uh, uh, deals right so coming coming back to our topic to conclude what would be your recommendation to in two two areas one is using source code uh, open source code uh, open source development methodologies and open source uh, uh, software to build your own enterprise applications other is just using open source uh, 
freely available, free and open source, the FOSS model uh, uh, available. So what is your recommendation to, to enterprises today to think about open source from development as well as usage? Uh, my my call would be like how much uh, wet do you want to get your hands with technology right of your total company spend how much percentage of that would you want to spend on it mm -hmm. i would take it purely from that that is my starting point so in my organization for tiny magic as a company if you take for me technology is a key driver mm -hmm. okay um, so there's not many people who are in the transformation business who use technology as a key driver. To me, I would say 50% of what our key value proposition is technology. And if you take my spend as a business, right, my spend 40% of that, no, in fact, not even 40%, around 55% of my spend is on technology. That includes mm -hmm. salary for developers, IT department, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, over a period of time, it will come down because I will increase spend on others. Not that I'm going to reduce this. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't see at any point in time, my IT spend is going to go lesser than 40% of my total company spend. It will be for technology. Mm -hmm. Enterprises today spend around 5 to 6%. Not people not in the technology business. Yeah. People not in the technology business. Generally, yeah. across all yeah, industries. Generally. Right? Yeah. And that itself is a high figure. It's usually mm -hmm. around one or two percent if you come for conventional companies. Okay. Mm -hmm. If that is the approach that you are taking, it's a kind of paradoxical. If your spend is less, better go for proprietary. Okay. You're willing okay. to spend more, then go for open source. So open source is for you to give you the agility in business. So it's, it's counterintuitive. What are you saying? It is counterintuitive. So open source is not to be targeted for cost saving. Correct. You will run, eventually you'll run into a trouble. Okay. Okay. I, I think that's a that's a very important point for 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 people to know. Nito, your 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 recommendation. Yeah, actually, like <clears throat> I go with what Kumaran is saying. The importantly. Uh, agility is the key, right? <clears throat> you cannot, like a, a technology company cannot do everything that they need in their own shop. Right. So right. if you are like, you know, really busy, you know, kind of like, you know, working on the individual parts of a car, you will not actually assemble a car in your shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you're trying to do it on your own. So that is where okay. the open source actually comes into play. It's not about like, there are two sides, right? One is whether you use the open source or, and whether you make it an open source, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like, you know, the people who is playing at like, you know, making it an open source, definitely like, you know, kind of like, you know, g gaining a little bit of an edge there. So mm -hmm. that is what the whole topic is about. Um, so, but like, you know, on the opposite side, like, you know, using the open source, definitely it, for, for technology company, it has become a mandatory thing because that agility is more important. And sometimes uh, some uh, enterprises actually now technology has become not like a support or something like that. Say, for example, AWS or like, you know, any like, you know, big companies that's out there. They are, they are business, but their business is driven by purely by technology at this point. So right, right. if you are like, you know, dealing in that area, like, you know, you're going to be like you know, having all sort of things. And in, when it comes to the open source and tying back to your security questions, the way that uh, we choose open source uh, solution is like you know look at the vulnerability list of vulnerabilities of a component or a solution and see whether you can live with it mm -hmm. so you get a recommendation from a security uh, analyst say hey like you know this component that we are doing and and you don't even have to do it now like you know, it's there are you know tools to do it it just scan mm -hmm. it for you it tells you the, these are the thing and the recommendation is this right so when you have that like you know, it is easy for you to like you know really like you know get into open source and make use of it and like especially if you're looking for agility and and you are you are your company is driven by technology 
so I think uh, uh, thank you both for for the this is a, this is, I think a very very interesting and good conclusion for for people to understand that if you want to spend less, if you do not have enough money to go around and play around with technology, go with proprietary software. If you really want to be cutting edge, if you really want to have uh, uh, investment in technology and building new things. That is, you have to look at the open source model because that is where the cutting edge technology exists today, right? So I think that is a very important conclusion, which is to a lot of people is counterintuitive because people think open source is free. So what we have concluded here is it is free, yes, but it is not free in the sense which you think it is free. So, so if you want, you want to you want to work within a budget go with proprietary. If you have more flexibility with your budget and you want to invest more, go with open source. So thank you for, for uh, your time and uh, we'll see you next time with uh, another more exciting topic. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you.